John, it's the big year and review sports media pod. And we each have our top five stories of 2022. I saw Romo at the Tahoe golf tournament and he's while I'm eating dinner with the guy that I brought there to caddy. He walks by and all he says is you're welcome. <laughs> and then he kept walking. <laughs> and all I can say to you is you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That had a, that had a bit of a Jack Buck sound to it, right? You're there. welcome. You're <laughs> welcome, Andrew. And we're back. The Marshan Orient Sports Media Podcast Year in Review. I'm Andrew Marshand, sports media columnist for the New York Post. He's John Oran. Oh, good buddy there, John Arad, is the media reporter for the Sports Business Journal. And John, gonna do it different today. Top five stories that you have for the year. Top five stories I have for the year. We're going to discuss them, go into detail, and look back at 2022. First off, happy holidays to you and everyone listening. Yeah, and you know what? We we talked before this pod, as we always do, we have no, no duplicates in our list. So they're going to be 10 different stories. I claim five, you claim five. Uh, this is going to be a good way to go into the uh, holiday season. There's going to be no who's up, who's down in this because we're, uh, we're we're just going to be talking uh, uh, our ranking. So why don't we get started with your list and your number one, which dominated this pod for months at the beginning of the year. It, it, it's number one with the bullet. Go ahead, Andrew. All right, yeah, we'll go we'll go number one, then you'll go your number one. All right. So my number one story are the big announcer movement, unprecedented in. Probably the, if you think about the money involved, the names involved in the history of sports media, uh, it's almost too long to go through it all. But the big one to me, Joe Buck goes from Fox to ESPN for Monday Night Football. That one, if you said that a year and a half ago, a year ago, uh, I don't think we'd say that was something that was on the horizon. He had one year left on his deal. Troy Aikman uh, first went to ESPN uh, and then that set up. The big deal, Tom Brady, uh, $375 million contract uh, with Fox. If he ever does it, uh, some people don't think he will, but still he's got $37.5 million per year if he ever does retire from playing. Uh, and then upcoming now, uh, Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson will be doing the Super Bowl. And oh, by the way, maybe the greatest of all time, Al Michaels is on Amazon. Uh, Mike Tirico is on NBC. Uh, and with Chris Collinsworth. And then just in their sixth year, Jim Nance and Tony Romo are sitting there at CBS, and Romo kind of started all, as you heard in the opening. You know, bargain basement. You have Kevin Burkhart, and you have Greg Olson at Fox. And Fox, on Thanksgiving, with the uh, the Cowboys game, set a record, NFL regular season record in viewership. And I heard from a lot of people saying, like, see, these announcer salaries aren't worth it, that they're, 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 they're being overpaid. And I believe that they are worth it. And I believe that that uh, looking at it in terms of current TV ratings is not the right way of doing it. You got to look at this almost as a marketing expense and it, even a marketing expense to, to an audience of five, which includes uh, Roger Goodell, Ryan Rolap, who listens to this podcast, uh, Hans Schroeder uh, and 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 people over at the NFL in terms of getting better schedules for them and just you know uh, ESPN went from having kind of like you know the cable package and a production that didn't rise up to what the broadcast networks were doing to now it's absolutely legitimately compared to NBC and Fox and CBS in my opinion. Yeah, a couple of things there. Number one, bargain basement. Greg Olson's making around ten million dollars this year. So- <laughs> I don't know what your basement looks like. That this, doesn't sound like a bargain basement. What? What? Come on. What do they pay you for this podcast, Andrew? Uh, almost ten million per podcast. <laughs> uh, that's one. I think your Joe Buck uh, is my 2022 was number one in my power rankings that come out in my newsletter every Monday. Uh, and this Monday has had my power rankings. Uh, the reason he went from. Almost doubling his salary, went from around nine million to fifteen million. Uh, he cut his work basically in half. No more baseball, just does Monday Night Football, and then you know a little side work maybe with ESPN Plus. Um, he did a Manning cast, but mostly just NFL. 
And this is the kicker to me. I think he'll be more popular because of this. And what they've delivered, Buck and Aikman for ESPN with flex scheduling, which we'll talk about more next week when we look ahead, uh, coming. I do think uh, it makes sense. A lot of money. Uh, now everyone at ESPN wants the big bucks. Uh, they're not going to get it. Chris Fowler, you know, I think wants to be in that neighborhood. And I think he's going to be told you can get a little raise, uh, but isn't going to get the same money as, you know, even near Buck or Aikman. Uh, and so if he wants to stay, he's going to have to make a decision there. Uh, but ultimately, uh, this was an amazing year in terms of movement. And then the big one at the end, uh, Tom Brady, which, you know, I've spent months trying to figure out what Fox was doing. Um, and they tried to keep that very quiet. And then they announced it. And then we had the, the story about $375 million for 10 years. Uh, when I was told, yeah, this kept higher and higher and Brady decided to do it. Um, we shall see, you know, how that turns out. It's a very interesting story going forward. Well, I just have uh, one quick question for you though. The, uh, so these are all NFL announcers and the NFL of course is the most popular programming on television, irregardless of sports. Um, uh, oh, but, hold on. Did hold I just on. say irregardless? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Chris Mason, can you edit that out, please? What's our friend who said irregardless? I is know. Not a word. That was like a, <laughs> that seemed like a plant, but John just did that off the cuff that is staying in the pod. You guys are listening. By the way, did that. you notice my facial expression? I knew the second I said it, I was like, oh gosh, I can't get that yeah. to come back. Oh, oh my God. God. Who's down? Irregardless. It's John Orant. All right, so, go ahead. uh, uh, I can't in the believe NBA. it, irregardless, just, this was an unforced era. You know what? Let's just go to the next topic. <laughs> okay, next topic. No question. All right, what's your number one story of the year? Uh, my number one story of the year is uh, Sinclair, Chris Ripley, and what's going on at the regional sports networks. And I hope people aren't going to click off this pod right now, Andrew, because this matters completely to how people are going to be consuming uh, sports locally this year, next year, and, and beyond, uh, the regional sports network business, more so than uh, than um, the national sports network business, is in disarray. They're paying; they they've been paying you know ten percent uh, raises every year, just about to to the teams uh, as their distribution has been dropping, as their ad sales has been flat at best, but uh, but uh, but dropping as well. We talked earlier this year to um, Adam Silver, who said that his teams are prepared for pain. And uh, by that pain, they mean uh, uh, rights fees are going to be, uh, they're going to start to roll back at some point. In my prediction column that, that's coming out, uh, I have uh, rights fees being flat going this this year for, for the ones that are coming up. And flat is not good. People, uh, they, people need to grow. So teams are going to start to feel the pinch. Uh, what happens and who comes in and how the teams and the leagues can take these local sports and figure out how to monetize them is just a question that, that's being answered. They're, they're going to try to go direct to consumer. There's not nearly as much money in direct to consumer as people think. There are other sort of broadcast networks, like I a story co coming out that came out last week on Ion uh, Broadcasting and Scripps, you know, tr trying to come in and getting some of the local uh, um, local rights to uh, to to try to you know create an alternative to to um, to teams that don't want to make big bets on the pay TV system. Uh, so it's it, there's nothing but chaos there. It makes for great writing uh, because because That's chaos. Is, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. But uh, and and there are no clear paths yet to uh, to figure that out. I think the one of the bigger issues and is social media because i just think that the the determination to have to watch these games especially for the younger generation is just not as great as it was for us i've said this a number of times on the podcast when we were kids you wanted to see michael jordan he's playing on nbc at one o'clock if you missed that game he does something great you missed it live that maybe you can watch sports center that night maybe local news has a highlight now the second it happens you just have it on your phone and most younger people, are, you know, we're all on our phones all the time, but younger people, especially, they don't think about turning on the TV. And I think, you know, you look at what the NBA is doing, they reimagine their app. Um, you know, I, I just I think that's a major issue that kind of ties into Sinclair and ties into regional sports networks is that 
uh, this younger generation, I don't think feels the need, especially like a sport like baseball, uh, to watch three hour games. Now there's some kids who want to, and I think baseball is doing a good job changing the rules, but mostly, you know what? Aaron judge hits a 500 foot home run. It's going to be on every social Avenue you can think of moments later. And so why do I have to get, I get the payoff there without putting in the time for the game. I think it makes it a little less, I was going to sound like an old man. It makes it, you know, it's not like get off my lawn, but like you got to <laughs> work for that great moment and seeing it live to me, it's a little bit different, but you know, for kids, it's just like, all right, I'll see it on social and go play, you know, game, you know, video game. Yeah. This is a focus group of one. Uh, but when my son was, was living at home, he's now, he's now out of the house, but, um, uh, living on his own, we would watch the Wizards games together, and I would watch on a big screen TV. You know, the the full game. Yep. He wouldn't be watching the TV at all, and every now and then he would come up and show me a highlight on social media that I had seen five minutes beforehand. I was like, you could have seen that right here, but it doesn't mean that he's less of a fan than me. It just means that he's consuming these games differently than you and I consume these games, and how these leagues. I'm speaking from a business standpoint now, but how these leagues and teams can figure out how to the, the word the word they use is monetize. Uh, you know that is it, it would basically make money from that is you know what's going to really win the day. A hundred percent. All right, let's move to our number two stories of the year. Who does number two work for? And mine is Amazon gets into the NFL. Uh, we've been talking about streaming uh, for a long time in sports. You know, people have brought up Apple and they've brought up Netflix and they brought up Tubi. And I know they brought Tubi, but Tubi's out there. <laughs> Who brings uh, up Tubi? You're the only one that brings up Tubi. To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> Nobody brings up Tubi. But I love saying it. Um, but now Amazon is, you know, ha- has had the NFL. Um, we're approaching the end of the year for them on Thursday Night Football. And number one, you know, there's kind of low bar here, but they've been there's again, I'm sure there's people out there being like, I had trouble streaming for the most part. It's gone pretty seamless um, in terms of them being able to stream and deliver the games. That's a win. They got Al Michaels and Kirk Herbstreit that gave him some credibility. I would say Al saying how terrible the games are every week is probably not helpful because that kind of brands the Amazon games as eh. Thursday night football is not that great. So I don't think that was very helpful. Um, and some things they haven't been great, but they've had some okay matchups too. Uh, you know, it's Thursday night and there's some limits in terms of that schedule because, you know, it stinks to go from Sunday to Thursday for teams. And so there's rules about how many times you can be on and who can be on. But overall, uh, I thought they did a pretty good job with the, the pregame show uh, and the postgame show, uh, the alt cast with uh Dude, perfect. They did some things and they had LeBron, even though the second time he was only on for like half the game. Which didn't make any sense. Yeah, we can't call it the LeBron Altcast anymore, can we? <laughs> it was it was it was a, a load management uh for TV. <laughs> <laughs> it was explained to me he had a game before and a game after. All right, but you know, talking on a video is very difficult. Um look, hosting uh, a podcast or hosting an altcast, it's work, Andrew. It's tiring. It is tiring. Um but overall, I think huge story. We look at the future of sports media. It's here. Uh, and it's very interesting to see uh, where this goes 11 years down the road and where Amazon is in terms of sports, in terms of the NFL. Here's what I don't understand about Amazon uh, is uh, I don't see where their path to profit profitability on sports is. Um, I, I So I, I the, who knows where this strategy is going to go for them. But then but what happens? Is, pardon me? Then what happens? I, you know, they, they, they take the NFL. No, and so- in general for sports. Like I, we don't, you know, we have a lot of podcasts to do. So we're trying to do year in review here, but what happens if that doesn't work? If that doesn't work, all of a sudden the leverage turns from the leagues to the TV networks. Cause there's, where else are you going to go? I mean, you're, you're going to try to go direct to consumer. We're the ones with the money. We're the ones with the distribution we're, and, and we're the ones with a the broadcast big networks, reach. especially, uh, especially the broadcast networks. I mean, we, uh, one unanswerable question is how far will the cord cutting uh, go? Uh, a mad core interviewed uh, Mark Lazarus of NBC 
we just kind of talked about, you know, the, the uh, cable networks being really squeezed by Peacock on one side and the broadcast networks on the other side. So direct to consumer and, and, and broadcast. So I don't, I don't know where their path to profitability is, but I do know this a after um, game two or game three, they had gotten over 10 million viewers uh, per Nielsen for each of those top three games. The production, like you said, is NBC's production, but Amazon paid for it. It was sublime. It was broadcast quality uh, production. Uh, and if you talk to anybody within the NBA, within within MLB, within any rights holder, they would they would tell you that you know they, it feels like a safer place. They, they're much more comfortable taking their letting Amazon handle their rights because of the way that Amazon treated uh, the, the NFL. And of course, the NBA wants to gin up a uh, bidding war for their rights. So it's in their it's in their interest to say something like that. That that brings us into the next your your second uh, story of the year. What do you got? Uh, well, mine is uh, the streaming strategy uh, that has that, that changed wildly in the middle of the year. We started the year where the the streamers were falling over themselves trying to get bid on content uh, and and spending a lot of money on production for entertainment content and being in the mix for for a lot of of sports content. Um, you know, at some point during the year, Wall Street punished them for that because they are like, okay, we don't need to see you spending on this content, getting subscribers and losing money. We need to st start seeing, you know, revenue. We need to start seeing profits, which caused a huge turn in, in how uh, these big media companies, you know, viewed their streaming services. And so uh, th that that is important. I, I put that as at number two. Because you know the whole ethos. I said irregardless. I had to throw like an ethos in there for you, Andrew. Just I have it's to try to come. Those, anyways. I have to try to come it's back. Eat those though. Use an ethos. Yeah, it's ethos. It's not tomato tomato. That's not oh, a tomato on. tomato word. That's. I ethos. live south of I live south of the Mason Dixon line. I say things how I want to say things. Ethos. We're gonna do, we're gonna do a uh, comments on that in the uh, Apple reviews, please. <laughs> I believe we need a ruling on ethos. We're gonna do a uh, AC wire. Are you still on uh, what ethos ethos? What do you say? Uh, ethos, and I'm from more south of the Mason Dixon line than you. So. <laughs> All right. All that's, right. A, that's one of our producers. That's in the bond. That's right. one of our producers. Thank ethos. You, ethos. It is. All right. Uh, All right. Judge AC. We're gonna call him. <laughs> will this mean you know what does this mean for let's say the the ivy league which gets a little bit of rights fee to get on uh, espn plus you know what does this mean for i've always said that there are haves and have nots in sports media and the haves the nfls the nbas they're fine there's no such thing as, as a sports right bubble for 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 those leagues right now but there's a very fine line and i think that we saw mls fell behind the line because linear TV was not going to pay what Apple ended up paying for them. So they, for, for they uh, did, did away with reach in order to go with, uh, with, with Apple TV plus. Yeah. Pac 12, uh, NASCAR. Pac 12, we'll see what happens with, with, with them. Uh, F1, they end up being a have, you know? Yep. Uh, and, and so well, I also think that puts pressure on these other entities. They're seeing what, you know, certain places are getting and they're like, okay, well, we were here percentage wise. We should be there percentage wise, but the thinking has changed. The economy has changed. Uh, and uh, so that's me. I think the NBA is going to be totally fine. Personally, you know, I, I've talked about how Eric Shanks and Fox sports, you know, not getting the streaming could go down in, in history. Sports media history is one of the great decisions of all time. That said, I like ESPN strategy as well. Like I like the all in strategy. I like, I don't, I've said this before. I don't like half measures. I just don't think you're going to win in this game. You know, most of the experts uh, think there's going to be three uh, major streamers. And so, you know, at that point, I don't know if going alone and we're going to get to story three, which I think, you know, I'll, I'll transition into here um, as they kind of all meld together. All right, let's move into it. The, the uh, number three story uh, for me is Apple getting into sports. Uh, we, you know, trying to figure out, you know, that uh, we've been waiting, waiting on the Sunday ticket situation. Uh, but let's just go with uh, they have the MLS deal and uh, the MLS uh, is going to basically be all in with Apple for a decade. Uh, they did the baseball deal on Friday nights, doubleheader um, with a unique style in terms of the 
broadcast crews with Katie Nolan, um, who was a uh, you know third person in. That was the most notable one. She's now said that she didn't think it was a good idea. You know, that was a little bit unorthodox um, approach on Friday nights. I think with MLS, they're going to go more, um, like MLS is driving that, where it's going to be more of people who have you're accustomed to have done soccer uh, in America. Where do you look at Apple and what they're doing uh, with Sunday ticket, you know, that uh, wild card? Well, you, it's funny because, um, you know, you always uh, defend Amazon's sports strategy. I think what you generally say is, you know, that you can sell paper towels with it. It's always paper towels with you, right? It is. I, well, I buy a lot of paper. We buy a lot of paper towels in the morning. <laughs> so that just sticks in my head. But that's not only it. There's also, I think you lose that they're selling advertising. They do have some advertising. Yeah, yeah. They, some they, advertising. They, 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 advertising. they still have to build that up. I love it. No, 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 no. I got to gotta stop you there. What do you mean they don't have advertising? No, they have advertising. It's it, it's not. I mean, if you sat through a, a um, Thursday night football game, it's not it's not sold all the way through. But they I mean, have it, advertising. I mean, yeah, again, they, 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 they do know. have advertising, but it's it still has to ramp up to be you know the the first the, year. Of course, it is. It absolutely is. I love Apple's strategy. I don't like their execution so far, but I love their strategy because. You know, is this going to help them sell iPhones, perhaps iPads? You know, it, they, they, there there are a lot of tangential businesses that I that, that, hold that on, I, hold on, I got to interrupt you. You think that the MLS deal is going to help them sell iPads and iPhones? It, what if they get uh, what if they get Sunday ticket? Okay, but no, I no, I, no. Like I'm not a like I've read parts of um, a, a Apple book or something. <laughs> no, we're no, by the. By, I think we were told we can't, we have got to yeah, yeah, stop promoting. Too much. So I've read part, so I don't know like the- It is a very good book though. It's a very I don't good know book. the iPhone business. Like, you know, I feel like I know sports media. I don't feel like they need that much help selling iPhones or iPads. They don't need help, but it's a tangential business that this can help. I don't think, I don't think- okay, they I got to keep calling you on this. So wait, you think, so wait, you think the MLS deal- helps them i don't think so i think it helps them maybe with apple tv plus that's to me the play it it, it helps okay so let, let's take them both Have, having sports rights programming helps bring subscribers to apple tv plus helps bring subscribers to prime video they both I'm will have really on this you think the, i'm sorry i'm sorry i, I don't know the, the, it's the holidays and i i can't help it but i i just i need to we need to this is what makes the pod good so you're saying that the MLS deal is going to bring subscribers to Apple TV Plus. I am saying that it's more likely to bring subscribers to a Apple TV Plus than it than it's going to have NFL fans buy uh, groceries off of Amazon. Yeah. So I I think that it's 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 a it's a more it's a more tangential business. I'm more likely to hey, go to the word. What do you mean by tangential? I, I'm more likely to go to the Apple store and upgrade my iPhone because I want to be able to see uh, to see the game better than I am to say like, boy, this is a great Jets versus Jaguars game. Let me buy some paper towels. No, this is what you're missing, though. You can't because, say no. That's it. Like, no, because this is what you're missing is that there's people out there, especially with gambling, who have to watch Thursday night football. It's not like these, you know, we can talk about the ratings haven't been as good. They get, I don't know what the average is at the moment, but let's just say they get about eight to 9 million people. Okay. It's right around there. Yeah. Okay. Let's say out of those eight to nine, and these are n numbers are not like, these are numbers I'm just taking out of my head. Let's just say a million of those were signups, you know, that they're the other seven or 8 million had the service before. If they have a million, if they bring in a million people, and then they start using their Amazon, they start buying every paper towel and everything off Amazon, like you know, a lot of us do. Uh, do you know how much money that is worth over time? Adding in the advertising as well. Again, maybe a loss leader in some regards, but um see, didn't use irregardless. Uh the but the but <laughs> in bottom some line, irregards, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But but the bottom line is I don't know. And again, we're I don't know, man. When I go into when I go into being MLS. When I go in to watch Thursday night football, I go into Prime Video. I watch Thursday night football, and then I get out and I get into my. You're own. missing the point that you have the service, though. If you had the, like, if you didn't I have, the, have the, I already have the service. I get it. So you, but, but do you buy stuff off Amazon? Uh, well, my wife does. Yeah. Okay. Whatever your family does. Yeah. So the bottom line is, they just want to get as many people in the world buying uh stuff off of Amazon 
all of Amazon, besides the other businesses that they can make money with this, that's like the core of the business is that every day there's a package arriving at everyone's house or home. Right. So and I don't know. So you, all right, how, let's close how, it. We got to move, move to topic three. We got to move to your number I, three. I, I just, I, getting that line going from paper towels to sports media is a tangled line. Getting the line going from I need to upgrade my iPad or iPhone, that, that that's a more linear line to me. It just is. No, but you're more... I, I listen. People can tell us what they think on this argument. I seriously feel bad. We're in the middle of the holidays, and I'm so wrong. By the <laughs> I feel way, like I, I feel we, like I'm Santa, and you just showed up in your stocking. I just put coal in it. It makes no look. If they come out with a better iPhone, and by the way, Apple, you've done a lot of stuff. We come on, let's get the iPhone. Let's get a new thing, okay? Let's kind of upgrade those so it feels like an upgrade with these iPhones. Uh, and I know it's hard. You guys, you know, you got a lot of money, but let's do that. <laughs> um, but the but I don't think MLS. Obviously, big story. If Messi comes or not is a big deal. And I've kind of... Well, I, I, I don't find MLS has a type of popularity to do that. If they continue to increase their, their sports programming, yeah, that, that's I, I think that it would benefit Apple better than it would benefit uh, selling paper towels on, on Amazon. All right, fine. All right, your, top, your number three story. They were disagreeing with each other agreeably. This is the... <laughs> Nobody wants to change that. Oh, yeah, I agree. We had we had JJ Reddick on last week. First take, first time he was on. They told him, hey, you got to uh you gotta have a take. You can't just, you know, Boy, just and did it. he have a take on my University of Maryland Terrapins or what? I have no ill will towards any fan bases except Maryland. All right, all right. That was that was good from JJ Reddick. Oh, no, it was week. not good from him. Who invited him on our podcast? This is our podcast. My goodness. By the way, Coach K. He's got a text from his producer, wants to send me a present for being on his podcast. <laughs> you cannot accept that, Andrew. You cannot I accept that. I was a guest, unpaid guest. He wants to send me a present. I mean, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Coach K, that's what I that's how we do it here. Coach K sending me presents. What do you want me to do? You're uh, getting sworn at by JJ Reddick. <laughs> All right, go. I'll, let's go. We got We want All right, yeah. Not too long because people want to go uh, eat, some, drink some more eggnog, and get ready for New Year's. All right. So, uh, mine. Uh, there, there were two massive executive moves in on the media beat. Uh, one is Jeff Zucker leaving. Uh, that uh, he was a head of CNN, but more for us, Turner Sports. He was a big sports fan. He was engaged in all these sports conversations. Uh, and the idea that he was going to stick around was great news for TNT, TBS, and their growing sports portfolio. I think I think Turner, um, under the radar, has one of the best sports portfolios in the business. They have every big league except for the NFL. They have uh, March Madness on, on their, uh, on their uh, stations. They have the Stanley Cup Finals on their stations every single year. They go. They have baseball into the league championship series. They have basketball into the uh, conference finals. I mean, they th that's a really good uh, portfolio. With without uh, Zucker in charge, um, they just haven't been involved with a, a lot of conversations. And there's a lot of uh, questions being asked among league executives about whether what what's going to go on. I, they thought when David Zaslav uh, took over, he's a big sports fan. Grew up under Dick Ebersol at, at NBC. Uh, used sports in Europe to try to build up Eurosport and, and discovery over in, in Europe. Successfully, from what I've read. Absolutely. And when he was uh, in running Discovery, I used to ask him, "When are you going to turn your sights on the U.S. market?" And he always said, oh, "The U.S. market is too mature. You can't make money off sports in here." Uh, and I, I thought that would change when he got a hold of a big sports-focused company here. But he, they're, they're, you know, when he said, you know, that they're not going to overpay for the the NBA, I mean, they they didn't know what their fiscal resources are, and that that's uh, I think they will overpay for the NBA. Yeah, I, look, I think they're one of the more interesting. We're again more into this next week, but in terms of interesting stories, Turner Sports, because you're dead on. I think they're sort of because things are on TNT and TBS because they share March Madness with CBS and people still kind of I feel like associate March Madness more with CBS than TBS uh, and True TV as well. Uh, the uh, I think it's they're underrated in terms of how powerful they are in terms of how much reach they have and basically everything outside of the NFL and college football uh, and college hoops. 
No, I'm kind of making a big list going against my argument. Anyways, no, they have like so many. No, they have very important. You look at the major sports and now they're getting into U.S. soccer. Uh, so I think they're very interesting to see where they're going to go. So in Zucker and like, you know, what, um, you know, what does Zaslav want to do? Luis Silberwasser, what does he want to do? And, you know, how does he look at things uh, with Lenny Daniels exiting uh, recently? So that's interesting. All right, your second half. Uh, and the Chris- second half of that is uh, Bob Iger coming back. Bob Iger, huge sports fan. Um, uh, he replaced Bob Chapek at the head of Disney. Uh, Chapek, not as much of a sports fan, but he really trusted uh, and, and listened to Jimmy Pitaro at ESPN and 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 seemed really uh, uh, devoted to ESPN. When they And when Disney had the activist investor that wanted them to spin off uh, ESPN, he listened to Pitaro. And that, that that's something that under Chapek was not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen under Iger. But that's something still to be seen uh, moving forward there. I think it streamlines everything. Uh, Iger and Pitaro have a long relationship, long-term relationship. Like you just said, he hired Pitaro. It's like players for GMs. If they draft a first-round pick, uh, they're just more invested. New GM comes in, you know, he has a new opinion. If the guy can help him, sure, if not. So I think with Iger, just streamlines everything, makes phone calls shorter, uh, and then, you know, the big one's the NBA. Uh, there's a relationship between Iger and Silver. Uh, and so uh, that just makes things easier. You know, a lot of this, you love saying it because you're you're like a Dick Ebersol disciple. Uh, it's about relationships. Uh, no, it's true, though. It's, it's true, true, though. It's true. No, it's true. It's about money at the end of the day, but it's just easier to do uh, a deal when you're just on the same page, it makes it more cordial. You've been through the wars before. And if there's someone new, you're trying to read them uh, and you have to explain things more. And I do think uh, for ESPN with Iger, they might not they have to justify everything, right? Iger didn't become one of the great media executives of all time by not under, you know, not having business plans that make sense. But I think with Chapek, uh, that would be more of a struggle in terms of not that Chapek was into sports, not that the NBA deal wouldn't have happened if Chapek had stayed on board. I think they probably do. It's just uh, to try to show the cause and effect, I think will be easier with Iger uh, and Silver. And if you look at it, I mean, if I'm a betting man, I know he got a two-year deal. Iger, I say uh, health is with him, which hopefully it is. Uh, I'd say he goes longer than two years. But if you look at those two years, we should have NBA deals within the next two years, you know, if not earlier. Uh, and so Iger should be leading the. So I think that's a huge thing. You know, that's funny. I was going to do a teaser for next week's show where we're going to predict who's going to replace Iger in two years. And you just stole my answer. Like, uh, it was a trick question. It's going to be Iger. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do uh, number four. And actually, I'm switching mine. I- I'm just looking at it here. Late wow, switch. on the fly. On here the we fly. go. This is how we do it. Audible. Omaha. 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 Oh, all right, good to hear from Peyton. Uh, it's not Peyton Manning. Live golf. I mean, this is a humongous story on a lot of levels. Um you know, in golf, this has put golf into pretty much chaos. Uh, this whole year, it's been really the focus of uh, of everything. Uh, it gets into uh, Middle Eastern money, uh, especially Saudi Arabia, and you know their human rights abuses. Um, and it gets into you know nine eleven, uh, and it's a touchy subject and how we should approach that. I mean, there, there are a lot of businesses doing business with the Saudis uh, as Charles Barkley, when he kind of flirted with them, pointed out uh, he's not wrong on that, uh, but it's a tricky situation. And it's one of the biggest stories of the year for sure. Yeah. And uh, note, noteworthy uh, live at the beginning of this year uh, uh, would have guaranteed that they would have had a U.S. media deal in place this year. Uh, uh, nothing came. Uh, there were a lot of rumors uh, about Fox uh, uh, being close to a deal. I still think that, that could happen. Yeah, I, I still think that could happen, uh, but but it's, it's it's not there. Basically, I, I think NBC is a hard no because they have the Golf Channel and they're so yep. intertwined with the PGA Tour. Uh, if Live Golf can prove that they can bring in ratings for some of these, uh, for for some of these, I mean, welcome to TV. Like if yep. if, if they can bring in viewers. There's going to be a, um, a line of networks uh, going after them uh, outside of uh, NBC. But right right now, 
that doesn't look to, to, to be the case. I'm not even sure if it's one of my top stories uh, for, for, for next year. It was certainly a top story for this year, but but next year, are they going to do a deal? If it's a deal, it can't be much more than a time buy on a broadcast network possibly, or maybe a, 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 a cable channel. I can tell you that the amount of interest from stories that I wrote on Live this year eclipsed just about, it certainly eclipsed the RSNs, uh, but it eclipsed a lot, a, a lot more of the uh, story, uh, other stories that I wrote that I thought would be more popular. Yeah, it, it, that is going to be interesting. And it also shows uh, the power of Tiger Woods, right? He could, they wanted him supposedly $800 million or whatever crazy figure it was. Uh, he could just turn that, even though he's, you know, hurt and doesn't play as much, but he has humongous power in this whole situation. Number four, we both had this one on our list. Um, I'm ceding it to you, uh, but we both had this. this. is definitely a top five story, no doubt. Yeah, and I, I almost ceded it to you because my story is about sort of bigger corporate strategy moves. You know, the RSNs going uh, to hell in a handbasket, you know, big changes of the top executives, changing of strategy. Uh, but this is a, a, a rights deal. Uh, with with the Big Ten taking its rights away from ESPN and then pu- putting them new, uh, you know, in the falls, noon on Fox, three thirty on CBS, prime time on on, on NBC, uh, a new deal that uh, pays the Big Ten conference a ton of money. But the you know the main reason that I have it on my uh, on my list is the structure of the deal, the, the or the way the deal ne- was negotiated was so unique because uh, it went through the Big Ten Network, which is majority owned by Fox Sports, which means that Fox Sports executives, Mark Silverman and Larry Jones, were not only in the room as these other uh, networks were pitching, they were the ones deciding who gets who gets what packages. They were the ones deciding how much these packages were going for. I have covered this business for decades, Andrew. I have never ever seen a situation like this and i can tell you some of these other networks they walked in there and they, they saw these two executives and they were like what the heck is going on because it, it was such an unusual situation and really kudos to fox because fox ended up you know getting those rights exercising those rights and doing a deal that helps fox more than anyone a hundred percent i think you're dead on with what you just said with with all that uh but the other part of it is ESPN out of the Big Ten after decades and decades and decades. Uh, that's a huge story. Um, be interesting to see. Now, ESPN will do that thing where they'll put game day probably every once in a while, you know, in a Big Ten market, uh, just so they can say, oh, yeah, we still cover it. But uh, we saw it happen with the NHL uh, when it left uh, ESPN. I think the Big Ten will be less of a focus. Uh, it also has national championship implications because uh, those deals now ESPN doesn't have, you know, has the right, I believe, to veto like opening up those deals. Uh, but, you know, this is where you got carrots and sticks and, you know, they can do a deal that's advantageous long term for them. Uh, you know, maybe they open it up, but I would not be surprised if Fox ends up with some of the uh, national championship games uh, going forward. Uh, so you just see how uh, Fox with their big uh, noon strategy. Wait, did you say some of the national championship games or some of the playoff games? I think now, I think when you took long term, where the national championship, what is that deal? That deal goes to, I think, the mid 20s right now. Mid 20s. I, I think it'll take a lot for ES, ESPN to give no, up. No, not going to give them games. up. I'm saying when you look at, like, you do the long term deals and that next, no, they're not going to, no, no, ESPN is not going to give up any national championships. I'm not saying they're giving no, up. No, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm even talking once these rights are up. I mean, that's a, ESPN has a priority on 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 keeping keeping these championship games. You don't think Fox is in play? Uh, I, well, of course. I mean, you have Murdoch on, on, going after him. Yeah, of course they're in play. But, but I think a, they have, but they also have the Big Ten with their network. Yeah, I, just I think- would just argue, I would argue that if, if you were to go over importance of sports to ESPN, the national championship of college football matters much more than than Monday Night Football. But here's the thing when you get into like streaming and you get into cable and like what is the importance of these things, right? Is to keep people on, you know, paying you every month. Or you're not, does it matter as much? It's not good for um, the viewers in a lot of circumstances. This one is not as, is a little bit different because uh, Fox is broadcast TV, but uh, if it's every other year, 
does it matter to them if it's every year? Like you still like, again, I get it. You could cancel if you're a big college football fan, but I don't know if you need it every year. Yeah. You know, I, 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 that's more of a philosophical question. I just know that with the NBA ESPN, uh, I, I will bet good money that ABC keeps the NBA finals. Uh, and, 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 and regardless, they share it. Uh, that uh, there's a possibility they can share it. I'm sure they don't want to. I'm sure of it. Yeah, they don't, of course, they don't want to. I mean, but but money talks, right? Yeah. Like, I think when you look at ESPN's deal with the NBA, uh, yeah, they'll probably pay more, but they're not going to pay double. And so, wh- what does that mean? They you probably have less. So there's a focus on keeping the NBA finals. Focus on keeping the playoffs. You look. I mean, I don't think you know. Uh, you just have to look at other deals, like what they did with baseball. I think that's where you kind of you see what baseball the the ESPN deal with baseball. I think that's a good template for what they'll try to do with the NBA, where a little less uh, regular season tonnage, more important regular season games, playoffs, very important. I mean, they, baseball, they can only get the first round. Um, and then the finals, uh, again, not they're not exactly the same because of what was available. But my point is, is that they want important games, not tonnage. That goes to streaming. And how valuable is that? It depends on... Uh, the sport depends on the price and and that's kind of a sliding scale all right what's your uh your number five is soccer the premier league with nbc the world cup uh the euros with fox going from espn to fox mls deal we talked about earlier with apples with soccer is a big deal but i will say this i wrote a column during the year after the premier league deal Soccer, look, I, we don't have to get into, I have total respect. You know, you got everyone who listens to this regularly knows I love soccer. Uh, it's kind of like hockey, right? I'm not trying to get, there doesn't have to be an argument of which is the fourth, the fourth biggest sport, whatever. There's five major sports, okay? And, and you know, if you want to cover, count college football as its own sport and college basketball, we could keep going in terms of major sports. But the NBA, the NFL, not in that order, NFL, NBA, MLB, uh, and then hockey and soccer, uh, soccer is international. There's so many different leagues. So it's a little bit different, uh, animal here in the States, but I just think that premier league deal that NBC, how important it was to them, to their streaming service and Peacock, uh, to me, I would say premier league, uh, is the most important soccer property to have maybe with champions league, but I really go with, uh, premier league as number one in, you know, in, uh, in terms of, English language um, games, you know, the Mexican league does has amazing ratings in the United States as well. But uh, when you look at the premier league, just because it goes for eight, nine months. And so if you have Peacock, you like the premier league, uh, you you have to have the service basically the whole year. And that's really the major value proposition for those games. Yeah. Here's what I find to be especially cool about um, uh, soccer. And this is, when did this happen? There's probably uh, uh, they've always had the early morning windows for obvious reasons because the g- games are being played in, in, in Europe. But I, I think over the last five years, maybe a little longer than five years, that early morning window has uh, yeah. on, on, on Saturday, on Saturday and on Sunday mornings has turned into a window that other leagues have, have tried to fill. You're seeing the NFL trying to fill that, you know, 930 AM Eastern window with more international games. Uh, you're uh, talking to, um, Rob Manfred about the uh, about the Peacock deal that they did, and he said the thing he likes especially about it is that they were able to start games earlier on a Sunday. They've never even considered that that was a possibility, but he found that fans liked it, and fans are more used to especially streaming those types of games uh, due due to soccer. So the the popularity of soccer in its windows has really expanded to to help out uh, uh, all other sports. Yeah, one final point for me on soccer is that a lot of people point 2026 MLS and that will help grow the sport with Apple and uh, best. Here's the thing about 2026. It also will grow how much interest there is in the Premier League in uh, La Liga, in the Buddhist Liga. You see these players, especially our American players, unless they're playing in the MLS uh, at that point uh, when they're really good, you know, in their prime. I think the popularity of these of these other leagues, which among young people, again, I've said this before, when you travel around, the thing I see the most, and again, there could be a Yankee bias here. I used to cover them, but they are the Yankees. I see Yankee hats and you see Premier League shirts. 
you know, and, and uh, you know, Barcelona, Real Madrid as well. But that's what you see. I see the most. Um, now, again, you see NBA shirts, you see NFL hats. I mean, obviously those are very popular. But I think with, with the World Cup coming in 26, I do believe that also could be a boon for the Premier League and these other international leagues because at the end of the day, we're used to watching the best players, the best leagues, uh, and that's what, what we want to see. We'll get into the messy deal, you know, if he comes to America maybe next week when we look ahead at the Apple deal because that's upcoming for 2023. But um, but I think soccer is very, you know, we saw with the World Cup, the great coverage by Fox Sports. Um, no laughter there. Please clap. I smiled. I smiled. Mr. Oh, yeah, Strong. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. I didn't love the Fox Sports coverage of Eden Henry. All right. I have a quick question for you. You only have two words to answer it. Who's a, who's coach? Uh, who's our coach in 2026? Pep Guardiola. All right, thank you. My number five is uh, uh, in uh, January, 12 months ago, NBC shut down NBC Sports Network. A few months later, it shut down Olympic Channel. Uh, and, uh, you know, the idea that a Comcast owned company would be shutting down uh, cable channels was eye opening. And they took a lot. They took a lot of the uh, premier sports that were on it and moved it over to, to USA. But they took a, much more of the sports and they bolstered up Peacock, their streaming service. And, and again, this is Comcast going direct to consumer with Peacock and really uh, diving down into Peacock. One thing that we've been talking about for, you know, a year and a half now, and I've been writing for, you know, like five years probably is the cord cutting trend. And this, th this was um, a, a, a nod by NBC and by Comcast that we're not near the end of the cord cutting trend. We're uh, probably, we're not near the beginning either, but we're right in the middle of it. Nobody knows how far these are going to fall. And uh, when they got rid of NBC Sports Network, it was in the high 70s, like you know, 70, I think it was around 78 million, million homes. Uh, right now, it'd probably be in the low 70s. You know, the, 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 uh, the sports networks are losing right around 8 million uh, subscribers in, in the past year. Is that going to slow down? Is that going to speed up? Uh, are people, after they cut the cord, and they try to get all these different streaming services, uh, you know, which all cost a lot of money. And so they're going to find that they're paying a lot more than they were expecting when they cut the cord. Is that going to drive them back to the cable bundle? That's where I was going. That's where I like to zig when other people are zagging. I'm not saying this. This is not my position as of yet. But I do think there is maybe a chance this could level off very well. Because I do think it's very complicated with all these different services. Uh, and you can basically get everything at the moment with your cable subscription, right? Like, I guess there's some games that like soccer, for example, that are on Peacock. Yeah, you're not going to see 100% of everything, but you're going to see most. You see most everything, especially yeah. the major stuff. You're not. So uh, I do think that you could see, you know, these major companies uh, getting together and be like, hey, what about cable? Because again, do they stay at 50 million, 60 million homes and then it stays there? I think that's possible because uh, it does get complicated. And if I'm a cable company and you know I have Charter Spectrum um, and they're, I find their app pretty good, right? I use it. I stream. I have one cable box and I stream on the rest of the TVs and I have it on my phone. I have my, my uh, iPad. And when I'm around other places, you know, you get all the national networks, you don't get the local networks. And if I'm them, that's where I'm trying to win the game because they're streamers as well. They're cable companies, but they're streamers as well. And it just, it, it becomes a little, like, I, I just think that we could see something turn. And I know uh, Mark Lazarus uh, said to, to Abe Madcor, uh, the head of Sports Business Journal, he said to him that, uh, you know, other networks are going to have this. Well, NBC Sports Network. I don't know. Do you know off the top of your head how much were people paying per month for NBC Sports Network? Uh, so I, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, probably around thirty cents or so. Yeah. Not... So they're paying ten dollars for ESPN. So it's a little bit of a different, easier to shut that down. Bring it into USA. That made sense. Make that more even of a super network. Uh, so it's not like they lost the sports offering on cable. They just consolidated it and made USA more valuable, uh, where people would want to get it. So it made sense that way. Um, so I, I think that 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 is that was a big story. Um, 
you know, another big story is going to be, I don't know what's happening next year, but maybe the year after that, uh, ESPN going direct to consumer with the mothership and also being on cable. And at that point, do people say, wait one second. So I can buy ESPN for $25. Um, and then I got to go buy other streamers to try to figure this all out where I can get ESPN still with my cable subscription. Uh, most people look at broadcasts, even though it's free, it's part of that kind of deal. Uh, you get FS1. I mean, I don't know. I do. See, think I don't know. I, I don't know, know if uh, they're going to go direct to consumer with ESPN, the channel. I I do think that they're, they're going to go, they're, they're going to go with a suite of Disney channels. So you, you can almost recreate the bundle. You want news, you have ABC news. You want mm. broadcasts, ABC's in there. You want kids programming, we have Disney Channel. You want how much that cost? Uh, what would you put that at? Fifty bucks? Yeah, fifty bucks probably. And and then and then th this up. Uh, by the way, I'm stealing this idea from uh, from our guy Michael Nathanson. Why don't I've you heard then something similar like a skinny bundle? Yeah. Why don't you then go to to Fox, who who also is is you know trying to prop up the the pay TV and say come on into our bundle and we'll put your bundle in here and possibly you can bring Turner in there and then. If if NBC and CBS are making all their programming available on Paramount Plus and on Peacock, you just they're not part of this bundle because that's going to make listen, the cost go too Bob high. Iger does that. I'm going to congratulate him and say you just invented cable TV. <laughs> they, they all Everything <laughs> everything old is new again. Yes, Uber, you Uber created a cab company that's easier to call the cab. <laughs> the athletic is doing subscription. Yeah, we we've been doing subscription forever, guys. I mean, yeah, they did it digitally. I'm not saying I'm giving credit. Don't get me wrong. All these people get credit. It's not like these things haven't been done before. So that would be amazing, and I'd be really impressed if uh, Disney recreates the cable bundle. Yeah, it does you, make some sense though. We will see, but I I don't know about uh, Turner or NBC, but I do know going forward, you're going to be able to buy that bundle, and ESPN is going to be part of that bundle, and maybe you can you you can carve out the ESPN channels. As like I just care about the sports bundle of that, but uh, you know they'll make it worth your while. That no, just get the whole Disney Plus and you know all, all, all other channels with it. We want to keep this under an hour, John. Uh, first of all, I want to say happy holidays to you. Can I say one more thing, Andrew? We wanted to keep it under a half hour. How do we? We keep going. No, no, just... no, no, no. We said forty to fifty minutes. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like we we listen. We like talking about this. Hopefully, you like listening. Oh, I was just gonna say before we get out of here. Uh, and I think we have our episode title. Uh, ethos is more of the European way of saying it. So, John, too much time on the tube, I guess. You know what, uh, uh, AC? It's interesting you say that because I lived in London for four years. So exactly. Uh, perhaps... we, can see, we, can see, we can see it over your shoulder in the video. So <laughs> the other thing is, irregardless is a word. It's just non-standard. Uh, this is according to Merriam-Webster. So, Who's she? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here all, I'm now, here all week. And... And what I found out is that the ear usually means uh, it negates something or makes it negative. In this instance, it intensifies. So oh it's even God. more regardless. Huge oh. irregardless debate on the pod. <laughs> All right, listen, on that, uh, who's our guy? He's from Iowa, our guy who did the irregardless, right? Uh, yeah, but I think we have to take a pod vote. I vote against irregardless. I I, I knew as I was saying it, I shouldn't be saying it. I mean, I'm not that bright. So when I said it originally, I thought I was like kind of sounding smart. <laughs> uh, that was really my intention there. All right. These are the guys who make us sound smart every week. Hey, uh, they Chris Mason, put, t t turn on your mic. I'm here. Yeah, Chris, thank you for everything all year. Chris Mason. And happy holidays and everything as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've earned a very nice break come with us and ac wyatt uh the uh executive extraordinaire uh who oversees everything uh, we appreciate that reggie but walker Andrew, you give ac wyatt you give him like new titles you you pr pr promote him just about i have no idea what title. i don't know his title i don't work with sbj but AC AC needs more money <laughs> he does i try to evp All right, i'm clipping that off <laughs> clip and send absolutely and i'll back that up too they deserve a mic. Like, yeah, Mason deserves a race too. Now they seriously, uh, they're the guts of the whole operation. We I sincerely appreciate it. So, and we appreciate all you for listening. If you want to like the podcast, you follow it, you give it a five star review, uh, you say something nice, you chime in on here regardless. It's all appreciated. So happy holidays uh, and a uh, safe New Year's. Don't drink and drive. Happy holidays. <laughs>